Games with small development teams can create masterpieces. They can follow their vision and create something with clear direction. This is certainly the case with Planet Crafter. So with that said, let's learn how to play. And make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more great content like this. We start off as a convict, imprisoned for an unknown crime, and having been assigned to this planet by Sentinel Corp to create an Earth-like environment in order to have the charges against you dropped. To do this, we're going to create items using the various minerals found on the planet. The basic minerals are cobalt, iron, and magnesium, and it ranges all the way up through aluminum, iridium, uranium, and even alloys. In the process of developing a biosphere on this planet, you're also going to create seeds, trees, bushes, grass, and insect larvae. The developers have even released a roadmap map just to show you how much they're going to implement into the game. So now let's start with the basic user interface that you see when you start the game. On the bottom left you've got your character's needs. On the top bar you've got health and hunger. The middle bar is water and the bottom bar is oxygen. Hunger is the slowest bar to go down. You fill it by eating food. In the beginning of the game, you're going to find that food in chests scattered throughout the world, but as you terraform your planet, you're going to be able to grow and harvest plants. Water goes down fairly quickly, but not very rapidly. It's always nice to have a spare bottle of water laying around which you craft using ice in the crafting station. The oxygen meter goes down very quickly, but only while you're outside. There's two ways to refill this bar. The first is to just step inside any shelter that you have built. It refills your oxygen automatically and for free. The other way is to use an oxygen canister. Oxygen canisters can be created by combining two cobalt within the crafting station. The size of this bar does increase throughout the game as you craft upgrades for it. Moving on to the top left, you're going to see the tutorial. These tasks can be done in any order, and once you've gotten to the blue skies stage, this screen is going to disappear altogether. In the top right, you're going to find the terraforming index. This is a measure of how far along in the game you are. You can use this as a reference for how close you are to the next milestone. For example, reaching blue skies requires 175,000 TI. And then later on in the game, you're going to unlock the compass. But in the meantime, there is coordinates on the bottom left hand side of the screen. That's really all the information you're going to get out of your user interface. So let's move on to talk about the map. This is the map of Planet Crafter, the most recent map anyway, it kind of keeps changing, but it usually remains pretty similar to what this is. So when you start a new game with all the normal settings, you're going to spawn in this starting valley here. This turns into a pretty big lake later on in the game, so I wouldn't build anything too serious in this valley. Instead, head up the hill here until you see this rock formation that kind of looks like an arch. This is known as the Central Plateau, and it's where most people start their first base. You can build something pretty big here because of how flat it is. It's also almost the dead center of the map and is pretty close to a lot of the resources you need. Another couple of important places to know about are the aluminum fields, the dune deserts, and the iridium mine. The meteor field and crater also have some pretty late game pulsar crystals, so those might be useful, but not until way later in the game. Another nice thing to know is where the first few wrecks are going to be. The first one you'll probably see when you spawn is up here. But as you move to the central plateau, that's a little farther away. There's another shipwreck right here, and finally a massive shipwreck up in the dune desert over here. There's a very small wreck over in the aluminum fields, and if you're really ambitious, you can go over to the warp gate inside of the gate desert, and there's another wreck inside of the arches. Now let's move on to where to find resources. The first ores you're going to come across are iron, titanium, ice, silicone, magnesium, and cobalt. These ores are literally just lying on the ground for you to take. They don't respawn, but after a while you're going to start seeing meteors, and those have ores in them as well. The next ores you're going to need are aluminum, uranium, and iridium. Aluminum can be found very rarely scattered across the ground, but you're more likely to find it in the aluminum fields, which are conveniently right next to the central plateau, so check that out. Iridium can be found by deconstructing heaters inside of the shipwrecks, but there's also this iridium mine, which is right next to the central plateau. You can find it by looking for the falling sand on the wall, and go inside there you'll see the iridium. You're looking for these bright red crystals. Uranium you can find inside of shipwrecks, but there's also also two uranium caves scattered throughout the map here and here. Later on in the game you'll also develop the ability to use rockets. One of these rockets has a magnetic satellite attached to it that can pull down meteors, and the meteor options that you have to choose from are uranium and iridium, so that's another way to get kind of a, essentially an endless supply of those two metals as well. Some of the more advanced materials are super alloy, osmium, sulfur, and zeolite. Super alloy is craftable, but it can also be found in these shipwrecks as well as this cave up here. 
Osmium and sulfur are found in osmium and sulfur caves, and they can only be entered after melting the ice caps in front of them. These ice caps start to melt at 100 microkelvin. And finally, you've got the zeolite cave, which can be found right here. The only other major resource that you're going to need are seeds, and those are found inside of these crates. And these crates are usually found inside of shipwrecks, but they can also be scattered throughout the world. Now that we have all our resources, let's start making the planet beautiful. We have to improve four different categories of attributes in order to complete the terraforming process. In the beginning of the game, you're going to be able to improve oxygen, heat, and pressure. Later on, you're going to also be able to improve biomass. You can improve any one of these attributes by creating machinery to help change the planet. Before you craft these machines, you're going to need some energy. You can open up the build menu to see what kind of energy creating devices you can build. And on the crafting screen here, you're going to see how much energy they make. To start off the game, all you're going to have unlocked are some windmills. They only take one iron to build, so it's pretty cheap. The energy in this game is wireless, so you don't have to worry about cables. It also means that if you created energy on one side of the map and used machines on the other, they would work just fine. Now the 1.2 units of energy that a windmill makes isn't much, but it is enough to get you through the first part of the game. So as you improve your planet, you're going to unlock new blueprints for better energy creation, including solar power, fission, and fusion reactors. The first terraforming machine you're going to want to create is the drill. That takes pressure from the planet's interior and releases it into the atmosphere. Usually the next thing you're going to want to build is the veggie tubes. Those use plant seeds to create oxygen. You can find plant seeds in any of the chests scattered around the planet, as well as in the shipwrecks you'll find throughout the map. And finally, in the beginning of the game, the last thing you're going to be able to create is heat. This is going to be the first object to require iridium, so make sure to head over to that cave we talked about earlier. And once you've created enough oxygen, heat, and pressure, you'll unlock the ability to use seed spreaders, algae spreaders, and flower spreaders. Those are what create biomass, but they don't get unlocked until later on in the game. That's basically what you need to know going in to have a good, successful run where you're not wasting time. So let's get started in the game. When you spawn into the starting valley, you're going to be inside this drop pod. Inside the pod, you'll notice a couple of things. One, your oxygen isn't dropping, and two, this crafting station. Before you venture out too far beyond this starting pod, you're going to want to go ahead and find two cobalt and one ice, then head back to the starting pod and create an oxygen tank and a water tank, and then you'll find some food in the chest here. I would keep one of each on you for the beginning of the game. Once that's done, I'll usually venture out and find myself three iron, two titanium, and one silicone. This is the bare minimum you need to create a living quarter. It's the living quarter plus one door to get into it. So once you have those things, we're going to make a break for the central plateau, but before you do that, make sure you fill up your oxygen inside of the drop pod. If you start on a full tank, one extra oxygen tank in your backpack should be more than enough to get you up to the central plateau. Once you're up there, quickly throw down that living quarter and door and head inside. You'll see it's refilling your oxygen, and you don't even need power to use it. Then you can add a crafting station, which just takes one iron and one silicone, and then I'll usually add three more living quarters around it to make one big square, and that takes six more iron and three more titanium. After that's done, I'll usually build a couple of storage crates, which are just one iron each and can only be built inside. Then we can move on to building some big machinery like drills and windmills. I'll usually build three or four windmills, they're pretty cheap, only one iron each. Then I'll add in a couple of drills and some veggie tubes. Even having just these couple of machines out is going to start increasing your TFI, which will start unlocking some serious upgrades for your character. It's really helpful to build those upgrades as you unlock them. There's upgrades to the size of your backpack, your oxygen tank, how much equipment you can carry, there's a flashlight, there's a compass, there's all kinds of great things. This is when we start getting into the part of the game that requires some of the more advanced materials like iridium and aluminum. In order to gather these more advanced materials, you're going to be leaving the central plateau. Let's talk about how to prepare for one of these journeys. Make sure you have an extra water tank and oxygen tank. Make sure your hunger bar is filled up. And then grab three iron, two titanium, and one silicone. I bet you can see where this is going. Then you're going to head towards wherever you need to go to get your resources. In this case, I'm going to head over to the iridium mine first. The iridium mine isn't that far away from the base, so I can make it on one oxygen tank. Once I get there though, I'm going to drop down another outpost so that I don't have to worry about wasting oxygen tanks. Once I have that, I'm going to make sure my inventory is empty. Besides the oxygen and water canisters. This isn't the best place to get aluminum, but there is usually a couple lying on the ground here, so I'll pick up two aluminum and fill the rest of my inventory with iridium. The whole time I'm making sure to keep an eye on my oxygen bar, and if it gets below halfway, I start heading back to the outpost. Once I have a full backpack of iridium, you just simply head home. With this iridium, you can also craft some heaters and more advanced technology. Next, I'm going to do the same thing and head out to a shipwreck. 
A couple of things that are going to be important to grab here are seeds. You can grab a couple of the Lerma seeds, but don't grab a lot of them because they don't have a large multiplier applied to them. What you want to look for is seeds with a very large multiplier of 2, 3, 4, even 5 or 600, though those last two aren't typically found inside of shipwrecks. You can also grab some super alloy, and if you have any room to spare, some iridium. I usually recharge my hunger bar while I'm here because there's usually food somewhere inside of these wrecks. Now that we have seeds, we can use those veggie tubes we made earlier, because before, we couldn't. So just place the seeds inside of the veggie tubes and they'll finally start to work. Once you run out of super alloy from the wrecks, you can head over to the cave. It is a ways away from the central plateau though, so you might need to build an intermediate outpost to get there safely. When I'm making long journeys like this, I'll bring along just enough stuff for one living quarter. That way when I place that I'm not wasting inventory space and I can just scavenge the materials I need for the next one and keep on moving. Then the name of the game is just creating more and more and more. You're going to make all kinds of machines. The higher tiered machines grow exponentially stronger. So keep crafting, get to that next tier of machine. As you get further down the tech tree, you're going to unlock some unique crafting facilities, including the bio lab and the advanced crafting station. Make sure you're continuing to upgrade your character throughout this process and building those advanced stations as you can. And enjoy your time crafting your first planets. It's always wonderful to see you guys in these videos. Make sure to drop a like and please hit the subscribe button, especially if this video was helpful for you. We're going to be checking out a bunch of different games in the future, so stay tuned. In fact, here's some recommendations on a couple of other games you can check out now. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.